But what I'm trying to say is, we need to feel each other's burdens. When one of us is suffering, we all suffer. Yeah. And we all pull together and see what we need to do to help. And I didn't call out no names, and I didn't call out no, but anybody that knows uh -huh. that would see that, uh -huh. they would know who I was referring to. I'll edit that out. Oh, thank you. And I, I, I'm not saying that to put each other down, but what I'm saying is sometimes even as the, old, as the same body, do we have time for each other? Do we have time to help somebody when they're falling? Or do we have time to reach down and pick them up? Do we have time to talk? Do we have time sometimes in the middle of the night to just pray? Do we have time for that? And if we're all in the same body, if we're all in the image of God, what are they seeing when they look at us? I'm going on here just a little bit. It said, verse 27, it said, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, and after that miracles and gifts of healing, helps and governments, diversity of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Is everybody in here an apostle? No. Is it, does everybody in here, are, are, are y'all uh, prophets? Did, does everybody in here prophesy? No. Does everybody in here have the calling of a teacher? No. Are all, does everybody in here work in miracles? Does everyone in here have the gift of healings? Does everyone in here speak in tongues? Or does everybody in here have the gift of interpretation? No. Not everybody has that same gift. I could probably take some of you, of you right now and put you back there in Tiffany's classroom and you'd be sitting there scratching your head having no idea what you need to do. I could call you up here right now and hand you the microphone and say, now it's found the word of God and you'd be like, how do I do that? I don't have that gift. I used to tell people I didn't have the gift to talk because I would take an F in school before I do a poop report. Because I could not speak in front of people. Until the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you. But not all of us have the same gift, but whatever your gift might be, work it with the other gifts. Let all of them come together and work together. Let every gift be used and work together. That way we're being completed in the image of God. That way we're being completed in the body. Your gift is different than mine. My gift is different than yours. But if we didn't have a pastor who would preach. That's what Canaan said that time. If he's not there, he's going to preach. He's our preacher. Not everybody can teach. I'm going to tell you right now. I might be able to stand in here and preach the word to you, but I could not go back there and teach. I don't even think I can teach because I get up here and try to teach, and then next thing you know, I'm about to break out in revival. Because <laughs> my gift is to preach. But it says, but cover earnestly the best gifts. And yet, I'm going to put it in simple language. I show you more of an excellent way. The last thing he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm going to show you something even better than prophesying. Something even better than apostle. Something even better than ministry. Something even better than healing. Something even better than tongues. Something even better than interpretation. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Some of those Pentecostal, full-blown Pentecostal people that, oh, they ain't nothing greater than tongues. Yeah. Let me show you a greater gift. And first thing he says in chapter 13, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and I have not charity. 
I have become a sounding brass or tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all miracles and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I have given my body to be burnt and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity not of love itself is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own way, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, or when I grown up, I put away childish things. I quit acting like a little child, and I became an adult. For now we see throughly, now, now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but when shall I know even as also I am known? And now abide the faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now does anybody know what charity means? If you had, if you had one of the new uh, uh, English Bibles, it would say, if I don't have love. If I, yeah, if I, if I have all this and I don't have love, I have nothing. That's right. And see, it says in that one part there, though we look through a glass darkly, we can look in a mirror and we can see ourselves. Uh, wait, let me get that <laughs> <laughs> When you tell me I had that many gray eyebrows. <laughs> But now I walked away from the mirror and I done forgot what I seen. Mm. Oh, come on. Well, we still hear about the gray eyebrows. Oh, uh, y'all gonna remind me of that. At least I still got more hair. <laughs> <laughs> Not much more. <laughs> yeah, what I got some gray. <laughs> Hanging halfway there. And if I comb it, it's gonna fall out, so I just leave it alone. Look. Now I know what I see. Done for God. We do that. We look into a mirror, and as long as we're looking into the mirror, we can see it. When we walk away from the mirror, we forgot what we saw. Yep, yep. Yeah. Mm. Is this your mirror? When I'm here, I'm in the mirror. I, I, I'm, I'm in the image of God. But when I walk away from my mirror, my image changes. It doesn't matter what you've seen in the mirror because you've done for God about. And a lot of times when people, they come to church and they go to church and they can get up and they can praise God and they can run the aisles and, and they can uh, talk in tongues better than any of them. And some of them's got the gift of the, uh, prophecy and, and some of them's got the gift of interpretation. But when they get away from the mirror, how well is it then? When they cannot see their image, does the world see in that image that we see in here? Or what's the image that's seen out there? Amen. You're driving down the road and, and somebody cuts you out in front of you. Do you say, have a blessed day? Or are you ready to give them the bird? Oh, come on. Yeah, bless them. Bless them. I'm talking about church people. No. Not Christians. Not people made in the image of God. But those who, as long as you're in the mirror, 
you can make it look good. Mm -hmm. He blew that horn and gave him the bird. There was a lady one time up in front of Kroger pulling in and on the back of her bumper said, Honk if you love Jesus. Beep, 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 beep. I love Jesus. I'm honking. And guess what happened? I get flipped off. Watch your heart. Wait. That I don't even bring. Whoa. She better take that bumper sticker off her bumper. Cuss me like that and you love Jesus on. Because when we're out there, as people see what we see in here. Oh, that's why I say, look in the mirror. Are you created in the image of God? Are you really created in the image of God? Do we show God's love everywhere we go? At home? At work? At school? At wherever we may be? I know some people, they work in some places. They're like, well, I really just don't want to work there, but I have to have a job. And while I'm there, I'm going to let Jesus be seen in me. Have you ever been somewhere where they serve alcohol as part of your dinner? If you if you so want it, then you know you can order alcohol, and then you have a waitress that comes up to you, and they just start talking to you and praising God and witnessing, and you're getting ready to drink that alcohol. But man, they just run my dinner. Some people do that, don't they? We don't matter where you work, you still gotta be a Christian. A few years ago, quite a few years ago, when my son Anthony was in the eighth grade, there were some Capital Midland students that used to go to Barbersville Middle School. And they had they got hit on the way to school that morning. They they hit a bus. The three students died. And they had a Christmas concert at school that night. I remember very well because it was on December the 11th, my birthday, and we went, we went to the concert, and Jerry Lake, he was the principal of Barbersville Middle School at the time. He's now personnel supervisor over the board. He does all the hiring and firing for maintenance, and custodial, and secretary, stuff like that. He's a service personnel supervisor. And then he was, he was the principal at the time. And he got up and he was, he was telling them about the three boys that died that morning. And he was talking about how they were former students of Barbersville Middle School. He said, I would love for everybody right now to just bow your head. How about, you know, we're going to have a moment of silence, right? Everybody bows their head, everybody gets quiet. And then when you think it was about done, all of a sudden you hear, Lord, Heavenly Father, I come to you this evening with a broken heart. Father, I pray that you comfort the families and he named the names of the kids. He said, and send the spirit of comfort to them, Lord, and bring them together in unity so that they may be able to find peace during their times of sorrow. Let them have memories. And he prayed, he prayed. And then he said, and in the name of Jesus, amen. A lot of people don't even say the name of Jesus no more. You got the chaplain, the military chaplain the other day that was part of the funeral service at the graveside when he got done. He said, and in heaven's name. Heaven's name? There's only one name given in heaven and earth whereby men shall be saved. That's the name of Jesus. Amen. I offended because when it was my turn, yeah, in Jesus' name. But I walked up to Jerry Lake that evening and I shook his hand and I said, 
So I admire you. So I admire your faith. Not very many people would have done that in this day and time because you can't do that. School, school officials can't link that. He looked at me and he said, you know what? I was a Christian before I became a principal. And just because I'm a principal doesn't mean I give up my responsibilities as a child of God. They want to fire me? I can find another job because they came looking for me before I even needed one. They came and, they came and got him to be principal. He said, I can find another job. But wherever I go, Jesus is first. And to look at him, you would think he was one of the meanest, grouchiest men there ever was. He's got a heart for the Lord. He, he does. He's got a heart for God. So, wherever you go, we are created in the image of man. i got one more place that I want to read, and that this is important. Second Corinthians chapter five. Beginning with verse eleven. No, verse nine, I'm sorry. Second Corinthians chapter five. Verse 9. Wherefore we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one of us receiveth the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your...